There's a couple divisions in boxing right now that are that are deep and power packed. I mean, from the standpoint of having star top quality guys in there, um, win this fight, and it changes your whole career. I mean, because that immediately puts you. Um, up near the top of a very deep, deep group. I mean, um, uh, what, what about that? I mean, the fact that this is a loaded division and what a, a victory would mean for you? Yeah, the victory beam will mean heaps, and that's what makes me dangerous because it's not a payday for me. This is an opportunity. I've taken this fight on the opportunity that when I win this fight, it opens a lot of doors. It's a, yeah, Bernard was talking about how rich the division is. I mean, there are a lot of money fights here. I mean, you got Hopkins, you got Stevenson, you got, I mean, you just got like Pascal's still, Pascal's still lurking around. You know, there's the, the, the possibility of Andre Ward, you know, maybe moving up, eating a sandwich and moving up. <laughs> but I mean, so, I mean, your mouth's got to be watering at, beyond this fight. Exactly. Um, like you said, there's, there's Cole Frox is still around, the Kesslers are still lurking around. So they're all looking for big money fights. and. I don't, everyone's called, saying Sergey's name, but I I'm sure if you ask Sergey or Kathy, I'm sure their phone's not ringing. We we heard the opportunity was there, and you're going to ask my manager, Lou DeBella. We pestered Lou very hard. We wanted this fight. Well, one thing about boxing is that um, you know a great performance, you know, being at the top of your game on the right night, and you can go from. Pretty much nowhere to somewhere. I mean, uh, who the hell heard of uh, Provodnikov uh, about a year or a half ago or something like that? Um, so from from that standpoint, you know, um, probably more than so in any other sport, one one great night can immediately vault you. Yeah, exactly. A lot can change your career. Like you said, one one great performance and right, it just opens a whole lot of doors and. You know, and that's that's what I want to do. I want to I want to get known. Talk about what you think you can bring. Talk about what what we might not know about you. Well, I'm a boxer. I've, I like to work a lot on defense, but I'm putting my attack together. I want to start bringing the power, and I want to start showing the fans I do have the power to hurt people. So I like to the ring generalship. I like to be smart, and yeah. That's what I want to do. Okay. I mean, how much do you, do you weigh right now? I mean, you look pretty good for 175. Yeah, I'd probably be about 180, 179. Right now? Yeah, right now. God bless you, carry it well. Yeah. You carry so, well. so um, weight-wise, you're right on where you should yeah, be. Yeah, weight-wise, yeah. I, I don't struggle to make weight, which is good. Um, I practically eat up until the weigh-in and just drop that water weight, and I feel good come fight night, just rehydrate and eat up, and I'm ready to go. You had a very short amateur career. I mean, what what was going on there? Just uh... nine amateur fights. Um, uh, I've been boxing for seven and a half years. Kickboxing? Nah, just no boxing. No, just straight boxing. No straight boxing. Yes. Okay. Um, so I was about twenty years old, twenty and a half, and met my trainer, and I said to him, I want to fight, and he sort of looked at me because I was playing Aussie rules football at the time. Um, I broke my wrist playing football, and I continued to box, gave football away. I always sparred, the, we, we made a decision early on that I wanted to be a professional, so we always sparred the pros, done the, the rounds as a pro, the three minutes, so we got the experience, a little bit of experience, ring experience in the amateurs, um, turned pro and we've been to several training camps now, like with Pascal, Al, Aldir Alvarez, um, Arthur Betabiev, Fonfara, and they've all been great for me. And Danny Green, Daniel Gill, all the Aussies. So. Mundine? You've been no, I've never been with Mundine. He reckons I'm too heavy. Okay. <laughs> did you uh, did you pick uh, from far as brain at all? As in him, from far as brain for, for you know for just like fighting at this level. I mean, he had a big uh, he had a big fight at this. Oh, I haven't spoke uh, since his fight with Stevenson. I'm sort yeah. of yeah, haven't got in touch with him. Yeah, because I mean, it's sort of you're, it, yeah. you're over here. You know, you're in the spotlight, you're fighting in a big fight on a yeah. major network. I wondered if you had an opportunity just to sort of pick his brain about Yeah, no, I haven't, okay. haven't picked it yet. <laughs> okay. Is there any possibility you think that he could be overlooking you? He hasn't shown that previously, but obviously he's been tempted by all these big fights. Most recently, Hopkins called him out, which was probably more of a negotiating tactic than anything else. but. Do you think he could come into this unfocused because 
he really is seeking one of these a big opportunity with one of the major players in the division? Um, I don't think so. I don't. I don't buy into all that stuff. He knows he's got to fight me. If he gets a loss, that Rex is with Bernard Hopkins. Now there's all the talk, but oh, I'm sure there's no contract. If you ask Kathy or Sergey, is there a contract? Anyone can say I want to fight Sergey Kovalev. So I'm sure he's looking at me because he knows this is a big fight for him as well. If he loses it, where's he go? He has to go back to the drawing board. Blake, how much did getting that one fight here in the states? You know, obviously you kind of know the routine a little bit. Fight in the states. How much of that? At least help you. You know, you, you've been here before, at least in the states. Um, the last fight, yeah, yeah. it was good, good opportunity. Um, just to, to the travel-wise, like I knew I needed to come probably four days, five days, a bit more. So we made it two weeks exactly. Um, even the sparring camps over in the states have helped, just the time adjustment. So it was great. It's very relaxing as well. You don't have to worry about selling tickets the fact and that. that. You went through it once already. Yeah. It's oh, it's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it was, it was good. Yeah, needed it. Without giving the game plan away, yeah. <laughs> you got to manage distance. You got to control the distance, and you can't let him get his range at three-quarter range where he's got long arms and he just belts away. He's got heavy hands. He doesn't load his punches, but he's got the change of gear. Are, are you fight, fighters? I know you don't want to feel it, but you know, I guess the myth of his power. Are you kind of interested to? Feel that what that power is all about. <laughs> no one wants to feel power. Yeah, no one wants. <laughs> don't you know, don't buy into this that people like getting hit. Um, you're gonna be in there. You've got. It. I'm gonna feel it at some stage, and then I can negate from there. Like if it's too devastating, I'll have to go to one certain game plan. If I can take it, we can do different game plans. So we'll see on the night. I'm not gonna go as far as to say he had a lot of success, but Agnew stuck around for a while in the last fight. Is there anything that you? Was there any takeaway from that fight, uh, what he did and what he accomplished in the ring that night? Yeah, you can take a little bit away from it. Even He didn't throw enough punches, obviously, but certain things he exposed, Sergio, that we looked at. Um, so, yeah, we took a few things away from that fight. You, you take f something away from every fight, even if you watch the slack fight, you watch that first round, you can, you can take a lot away from that. So, yeah. How gratifying would it be you know, Grant, the very long odds in both fights, you know, you're, you admit you're a big underdog and Danny's a big underdog night, but, you know, Australia, two big wins back-to-back -back weekends. Uh, it'd be huge, wouldn't it? It'd be, oh, it'd be very exciting. Um, I hope that Dan can bring it home tonight. It'd be awesome. Um, but I'm focusing on my win, and that's what I want to do. What what's in the is there something in the character of the Australian fighter right now that makes you guys say we're not we're not other people are worried we're not worried. Oh, I can't talk for the other guys, but I'm just confident in my ability. Um, like I said before, to be the best you have to beat the best. Sergey's the best at the moment. People can throw out his name, but I don't see anyone ring. I don't see the phone ringing. So we actually jumped at the opportunity, and we're very confident. Yeah. So you don't think people should be worried about him, or just that you aren't? I don't know, but I can't speak for other people. Of course, of course, of course you gotta, you got to respect him. Mm -hmm. Of course, you got to respect every fighter getting in there, but a lot of people make the mistake of they fear. If you fear the power, you've, you've, lost, you've lost the fight already. You can't, you got to respect it, but you can't fear it. How long have you been following Kovalev's career? Um, a while back, I sort of started, he made some noise, and then obviously Cleverly was in our sights, and then Kovalev beat Cleverly, and Kovalev took over, so we started following Kovalev. Taking an objective view, what do you think of him as a fighter? He's good. He's very good. I like some of the things he does. You know, you watch him and people just see the big devastating power, but there's a lot behind that. Like if you break him down, there's a lot behind it. He's got a change of gears. He's not. He doesn't actually brute force. He, you know, he taps his way in and yeah, it's, it's got some good tools. But you clearly see some weaknesses that you can exploit. Of course. I'm, you can any fighter. You can you can find weaknesses. Now, if you're good enough to capitalize on those weaknesses. That's the then you're good, aren't you? So what can you do that other opponents have not been able to do against you? You'll see August second. Yeah. yeah. So let me rephrase it that way. Then, what have other people not been able to do against them? What are the mistakes that they've been making? They haven't negated his power. They've sat in in his power. They've given him the power.
Do you feel like the fact that we're asking like cobalt up questions no, no. Uh, is disrespectful to you in a way, or do you understand the, the storyline that's out there? No, you understand because Sergey's the star at the moment. He's the big draw card at the 175 division. He's the most feared fighter. And I'm being written off by a lot of people, if not everyone. So I understand all these Kovalev questions and it's all about him. But at the end of the day, the hype's about him, the pressure's on him. I'm here, I'm enjoying my time, I've trained hard, I've had my best camp to date, and I'm ready to take the title. Do you think some of the writing off of you actually has nothing to do with you, but more the fact that a lot of people aren't necessarily familiar with you because you haven't been the star, you haven't been on HBO or anything? Yeah, it's a lot like that. I only had my first fight at the start of the year with Americans, so the Australian scene's not big over here. So, yeah, you get written off like that. Um, probably didn't rate my performance at the start of the year, but until you're in the ring. Um, so for people who aren't familiar with you, you know, um, who haven't seen you on TV just yet, you kind of hinted at it, but what should people know about Blake Caparello, the fighter or the boxer? I like, I like to be slick, I like the, the smarts of boxing, um, and mentally I'm tough. I'm a mentally tough fighter, and I think that, that takes a lot in boxing. Um, even if he hits hard and you get hurt, Physically you might be hurt, but if mentally you're tough, you can get through it, it goes a long way. Who's hit you the hardest? My mum. <laughs> you got to respect your mum. <laughs> well, so, so who's hit you the second hardest? <laughs> um, oh, I don't know. Oh, you got me on the spot. I'm not, yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. But I mean, you've been in there. I've been in some big punches. Um, right. Everyone, like Alan Green, for example, if you stand in front of him, he can whack as well. We all seen him with Mikael Kessler and all that. He can, he can bomb. Um, even back in the day, you know, you got the lesser-known fighters back in Australia who just got heavy hands. Even Kevin Engel, for example, he might be a journeyman, but he's got sort of that brute, solid force. So there's a lot of big punches out there, yeah. Is there any symbolism to the shirt today? Or? My girlfriend bought it for me. <laughs> You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta respect Muhammad, don't you? He's been with some big punches and he found ways to win, so you gotta do it. George Foreman, game plans. So you just told Mental. us your game plan, you're gonna rope a dope. Yeah, rope a dope. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? We'll see you on the night.